With the all-new upcoming edition of Resident Evil 3 on the horizon, we wanted to share with you today our predictions about the game. We did a video on the things that we personally wanted to see in the remake, and you can check it out in the video description below if you're interested. While some of those desires have already been ruled out, we think it was about time to cement our predictions before more news rolls out as the release date draws near. Here are our top 10 predictions for Resident Evil 3. Nemesis will retain its ability to dodge. One of the major highlights of Nemesis is that it's the first enemy in the series that can actively dodge and avoid the player's attacks. We think that retaining this ability would highlight Nemesis's uniqueness in the series as a highly intelligent combatant. Elements of randomization will make a return. One of the charms to the original Resident Evil 3 was the different parts of the game that were randomized. Would Brad break out of the door? Would there be a grenade launcher or magnum in the star's office? Would there be hunter gammas or sliding worms in the main area of the park? We think that while it won't be as heavily featured like in the original game, we will see it return in the remake. We think that the unessential items, enemies, and some weapon placements will be randomized once again. The grenade launcher will feature a new type of ammunition that wasn't featured in the Resident Evil 2 remake. In the original Resident Evil 3, the ammunition available to Jill Valentine for the grenade launcher were explosive, flame, acid, and freeze rounds. We predict that the reason we haven't seen the iconic weapon in the trailers and screenshots yet is because they're saving a surprise for us. And that surprise will come in the form of a new ammunition that wasn't featured in Resident Evil 2 Remake. If we had to predict what kind of new rounds we may see, our money is on the return of explosive rounds and freeze rounds. However, as Capcom makes more cuts in the game to focus on a more realistic approach to Raccoon City, it's possible we will see an all-new ammunition in place of freeze rounds. We think that the game will feature some type of utility ammunition that can be used to aid Jill defensively against Nemesis, such as a smoke round. Carlos Oliveira will have more playable screen time in the game, but will not have his own campaign. In the original Resident Evil 3, Carlos had a playable segment where he had to explore the Raccoon City Hospital and create a vaccine for Jill. We believe that this event is going to occur in the game, but this won't be the only time we have control of our friend Carlos. The screenshots and trailers that we have gotten for the game so far really make us feel like Carlos will have more playable segments in the game. With Capcom's focus on a more character-driven experience, we believe that Carlos will have a deeper story than he did in the original Resident Evil 3. We think that Carlos will have three playable segments in the game. He will have a segment in the RPD, and possibly interact with other survivors like Marvin or Elliot. He will have a segment in the newly reimagined Spencer Memorial Hospital, where he will once again craft a vaccine for Jill. He will have a segment in the Raccoon Park, where he will fight the Gravedigger, unlike in the original game, where Jill was the one who had to deal with it. We feel like this would be a good change up for the game, as opposed to the original, because Carlos would have his own boss to deal with. Jill will have Nemesis to deal with for most of the game, and while we do think that Carlos will help her out with the Pursuer, we don't think it will play a large role in his playable segments. Barry will not make a return at the end of the game. In the original Resident Evil 3, in the true ending, Barry Burton himself makes an appearance and rescues Jill and Carlos from Raccoon City at the last moment. We, however, think that Barry will not be returning in the remake. We primarily predict this for two main reasons. In Carlos Oliveira's character bio, Capcom decided to specifically point out that there were few vehicles he can't pilot. We think that this is pointing more towards the ending of the game where Carlos will be the one to pilot the aircraft out of the doomed city as the missiles close in. With this in mind, there would be no place for Barry at the end of the game. Additionally, it seems really silly financially for Capcom to go out of their way to redesign Barry for a few seconds of time in the game. In the original, he has less than a full minute of screen time, 
with really no crucial impact to the story. We feel like hiring a voice actor, finding a model, and mocapping him would be something Capcom just wouldn't consider for a measly few seconds on screen. Keep in mind that we realize that there are ways to get around this. For example, you could not show his face or not show most of him. He could just be a voice. And while we think that this part is possible, we think it will be reimagined. Also, it should be noted that we are in no way saying we are against Barry being at the end of the game. This is just how we feel things are going to go down in the finished product. Nikolai will escape and not be killed. We think that, unlike in the original game, no matter what happens, Nikolai will not be killed during the events of the game. We don't have much to base this on, but it would be our personal preference for him to make it out of Raccoon City alive. Nikolai is a despicable character, and one of the most interesting villains in the Resident Evil franchise in our opinion. The dynamic between him eliminating his own comrades and his track record of survival being put to the test constantly makes him a thrilling character. With what we've seen in the reveal so far, he has been promising as well. We do think that he will have a run-in with Nemesis near the end of the game and get banged up pretty bad, but we don't think he will bite the dust. We also want to point out that if there is any kind of DLC episodes added to the game, Nikolai's escape would be a pretty high contender on what we would like to see. Brain Suckers and Drain Deimos will be redesigned into a single creature. We believe that the Brain Suckers will make a return to the game, but go through a major redesign, much like the Ivies did in Resident Evil 2 Remake. We don't necessarily believe the Drain Deimos will be cut entirely. Rather, we believe that these two creatures will be reimagined together into one design, and carry the Brain Sucker name. This makes sense to us because of how closely related the two are in the lore of the game. In the original game, they both act, attack, and move around almost exactly the same. We think that fusing these enemies into one single design will streamline the experience. The main reason why we think the creature will carry the name Brain Sucker is because they are accidentally created as a result of the outbreak within Raccoon City, and it's probably what the survivors would call them. We will take this prediction one step further and say that there will be a file in the game that will refer to them as brain suckers. St. Michael's Clock Tower will be cut from the game, if not entirely, almost entirely. With all of the things that have been revealed up until this point, with the exception of the Raccoon City map that's included in the Collector's Edition, we have seen nothing about the clock tower. We don't think that this is because they are saving the clock tower, but rather because they are cutting it, either altogether or cutting down its importance in the story. We think that the iconic battle that took place at the clock tower is now going to take place at the final destination of wherever the subway train takes you. We think that the screenshot with Mikhail and Jill is moments before Mikhail's heroic sacrifice which may lead to similar events with the cable car in the original game. We think that wherever it ends up crashing or being compromised in the remake is where the battle will end up taking place instead. We also think that just like in the original game, the battle will be the reveal of Type 2 Nemesis once again. Resident Evil 3 will open up in first person. When the trailer was presented to us at State of Play, we all made jokes and laughed about the fact that it was going to be in first person. We believe, however, that the game will open up in first person. We have already seen what appears to be glimpses of gameplay and a first person perspective in the trailer for Resident Evil 3. We believe that the opening segment of the game will be played out in first person. While we do think that the segment will be short, perhaps a few minutes at the most, it would be an interesting decision on Capcom's part to shake it up like this. Going back to the first trailer, we also see Jill Valentine looking infected while staring into the mirror. This part of the game seems to be her imagining what could possibly become of her if she were to fall to the T-Virus. We think that this part wasn't just a cinematic, however, 
but is in fact a part of the opening segment before Nemesis shows up to eliminate her. What do you guys think about our predictions? Do you think we hit any nails on the head? Do you think we're dead wrong? What are your predictions? Let us know in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching, and don't forget to smash that like button like Nemesis is going to smash Brad, and hit that subscribe button for more Resident Evil videos. Thanks for watching.